Okay, so we shall uh, proceed with uh, adding our, our project onto railway, uh, deploying onto, onto railway. And uh, uh, the first thing that I did, I had created a custom uh, Docker file uh, that I'm using in railway. Uh, yeah, so it's basically the same commands, similar to what you have in the uh, in the Docker development project. And there is also, uh, with the exception of a few commands like this one, I've exposed uh, port 8000. And also I'm uh, running a script here that uh, populates the database, creates a database schema, and also runs, uh, uh, copies the collectic uh, static, or, or rather copies the static files using the collect static command. And then it also loads the initial data and uh, uh, fires up a server uh, uh, using Unicorn. And this is a command that is going to be run in uh, Redway. Uh, one thing uh, with this, you may have to refer to the Docker entry point uh, command as well. And some of the commands normally have, the, they're usually in like a list kind of uh, brackets. And actually, I believe that's the preferred method. So for this one, I'm just setting it for demonstration purposes, but you can see how you can add it to yourself. So the first step will be logging into a railway. Um, yeah, so I've already logged into my dashboard. And uh, one thing also to note is that at uh, the time of this recording, uh, we are counting days because uh, railway is also following the pricing model of uh, or the model of Heroku whereby uh, they will start charging for for these uh, using their services. Uh, but you can check more on their documentation. Uh, the other thing that you need to look at is this. For the free resources at the, at the moment, uh, normally every month they normally give you give somebody these uh, five dollars worth of uh, a time and it's also uh, it's also counted based on the execution hours and uh, you can also check on your usage limits uh, if you please so uh, the first step now will be after you have logged in you can create an account with railway and then you log in and uh, this is how my interface uh, looks like and you will click on this top right button uh, for new project and then from this new project uh, you can select the GitHub repository. Uh, but in my case, because I'm using, uh, it's good to, of course, plan ahead and look at, are you going to be using a Redis database? Are you going to be using a MongoDB or MySQL? Or do you just want to create an empty project? So in my case, I would prefer to provision a database first. Uh, so I'll just provision a PostgreSQL database since my if you look at my settings, let me actually refer to my GitHub project. Uh, one of the services here is uh, is uh, PostgreSQL, so that's why I'm and I, and even in my settings uh, file, I've done the PostgreSQL. So it has already set up the PG uh, Postgres database, and uh, it automatically also creates a project. So if I go back to my dashboard right now. The, like in the previous page, you see that we have an auto an automatically named a uh, project it's called Cardly Rate, and it has a PostgreSQL database uh, running. So let's just click on the PostgreSQL service, and uh, just a quick view. You look at uh, the properties. So there are variables that it has automatically created, and uh, they include the database URL, PG database, PG host password, and uh, user. And these are the parameters that we are. Uh, or the variables that we are going to use uh, when we provision our project. And then we also have the logs uh, that normally show what is running. And I believe these logs that are highlighted in red are either warnings or probably errors. Yeah, so, and they make, uh, they're making use of the timescale uh, DB for those of you who are familiar with the timescale. So we also have the metrics. Uh, showing the, it's basically showing the memory usage and the network usage, and then we also have the settings. In case you want to reset your database, you want to wipe the data, you want to delete all your service, uh, the database service, you can use this, uh, or even do some backup, or even restart as well. So the next step will be 
creating, we now click this new button and now we'll create our project. Our project is present in the GitHub repository as shown here, uh, my demo website. So I'm just going to click on the GitHub repo. In your case, if you are doing it for the first time, then it's going to ask you some details or it's going to ask you to allow to give uh, railway authorization to your GitHub account. So in this case, I have my project here since I had tested it earlier. Uh, the deployment on railway is usually quite fast and uh, just as with the event of a click, uh, it already starts building. And uh, maybe let's just view the logs. Uh, there's normally what you call the build logs. And you'll notice that this build log is somewhat similar to if you have been building projects using Docker, uh, you're going to notice that there are some similarities with this. Uh, like now it is installing the packages using pipenv. And these commands, as you're seeing them here, they are similar to what we have in the Docker, uh, Docker file. Uh, one of the steps is that, uh, that I need to instruct uh, the railway is that I need to tell it which to use my specific Docker file, since I've added some custom commands there. That is, that should be the first step if you have a custom Docker file. So in this case, I'm going to go to, I'm just going to close this and click on settings in my project. And the first step will be pointing it to a given uh, Docker file. And I believe this one, we can do it in the, when we are creating the environment variable files. So for now, if you look at uh, these settings, we have the automatic deployments. So this one tells, checks on the GitHub branch. So if you want to set it to a, give, to a different branch, like mine, I only have the main branch uh, or the master branch in some cases. So you, anytime there are changes in, the, in this main branch, uh, then we are going to have, uh, it's going to automatically do a build. And then we also have the domain. So if you want to access, of course, if you want to access your project from outside or from the, from the web, then you need to set a, a domain. And in this case, uh, I think it's only wise if I generate, uh, I generate a, a domain. So if you already have purchased a domain from a domain host, you can add your custom domain. So in this case, I'll just stick to this because uh, this is, uh, I, I am not using a custom domain for this project. And then uh, we also have uh, all these other settings. There's this service ID. Uh, we also have the service name. You can change the name of the service if you want. And if you have a different root directory, you can also refer to that. And then you can also watch path. You can also add a startup command. Think of this as an entry point command that maybe will be changed to your entry point command. So the command that I was showing you in the Docker file, probably if you do not want to add it in the Docker file, you can just uh, proceed and add it here. And then, yeah, we also have other settings here, replicas, health check path, but most of these are referred to in the documentation. So we are not going to get into them. And of course, just like the previous Postgres instance or Postgres service, you can be able to delete this service whenever you uh, you want or whenever you please with it. So the next step will be the variables. Because if we have not added, like now we have not added any variables, my project is dependent on variables and you're going to see that there are some going to be some errors uh, so we have no deployment logs. Let me see the build log. So this build log has just been automatically built using railway. So I do not expect anything on the deployment log. So let me add the variables quickly. And then we are going to uh, proceed from there. So I've set up my variables and uh, it's uh, actually, there's even a hint here if I want to refer to my database variables, but I've already set them up. Uh, you can also add these variables. You can also check your variables as, a, as JSON when you click the raw editor. And then you can also add a new variable using this button. So let me just take you through a quick, a quick update on what we have here. So the allowed host is, uh, is uh, you can refer to the Django documentation. Uh, it points to the uh, URL or to my project 
railway, the, the, the custom URL for my project. Um, and then we have the AWS access key ID. All these AWS variables, prefix variables, uh, this is when you're using the AWS S3 uh, as your, for your static settings. So if you want your static settings to be copied into AWS S3, I won't go into the details of it. Just know that the AWS S3 uh, free tier runs for one year. So you can use it for up to one year. And also there are those limitations when it comes to, I believe when you, the number of times you copy your file. So you run the collect static. They you normally know, there's a calculator that checks how much uh, megabytes or how what is the bandwidth or the data that you have transferred. There's a limitation, but I'm not going to go into the details of it. And then in this project, I'm using Cloudinary. So Cloudinary API uh, is also a service that is used for static file handling besides AWS and besides white noise. So I'm using that and that's why I have these settings, Cloudinary API key, API secret, cloud name and the cloud URL. I am not going to expose them here because uh, those are uh, specific to my account. And then we have the database URL. So this database URL points to the Postgres database URL. So you can see the way this variable is designed. So this one, I'm automatically telling Redway to use what it has created from the Postgres uh, instance. And uh, this goes for all these other data, the DB name, DB password, and DB user. Now for the Django settings module, uh, since I'm using it in a production setting, I've, I've configured it to use production settings, then that's why I've set it to point to my, the project settings uh, production files. And this we had looked at it even in the in a previous, uh, uh, when we were starting. And then we have the email settings. So my project also entails uh, sending of emails using SMTP. So there are various services that you can use. We have SendGrid, Mailgun, Google, and others. So I've, all, I've configured uh, also these settings. And then we have the one very important variable, which is the engine. So the engine, uh, in this case, I'm using uh, PostgreSQL. And that's why I have it set as the engine. But I, I configured it as a variable because you may want to use MongoDB or some other database. So I'm like MySQL, so you can use that. And then we have the port. So the port is, uh, of course, uh, this port is uh, configured to, this is a application port. So this is a variable that is referenced from the railway documentation. So if you want your project to be accessed from outside, you need to specify this, uh, you may need to specify this variable. Uh, so we also have these other two Postgres host and Postgres port. And then we have the railway Docker file path, which now points to our Docker file, our custom uh, Docker file. So uh, you need to also, this is also provided by railway and it's in their documentation. Then we have the secret key. And then we have three variables here. Uh, whereby we are using, I have configured this project to use either Cloudinary, S3, AWS S3 service or white noise. So whichever you want, you can set it to use that. So in this case, I'm using Cloudinary. So I've set this to true. It uh, actually requires a Boolean uh, value. So in this case, I've set use S3 to false. And the other one is uh, white noise. I've also set it to false. So you can check on the settings, the PUI file for production for uh, additional settings, which are triggered by setting these uh, to each any either of these to true. So now let's look at our deployment. And uh, I'm going to view the logs, which are a very, very important part when it comes to deploying this project. So as you can see, I, I am seeing that it has created the migrations. I'm not sure if it's possible to scroll upwards. Uh, Okay, but we can also check the build logs, nevertheless. So it has built uh, successfully. Actually, if it does not build successfully, uh, it's going to show you a notification. So in this case, these are the logs. I'm only seeing the migrations. So I'm assuming that uh, things um, are okay. Now, what happens in this case? I know there's something that is happening in the background. It is copying the static files. and. Uh, I don't know, let me just try and uh, move away from the service, probably refresh this page and go to the logs once again and look at the deploy logs. Uh, they don't seem to be changing. 
but uh, the static files for this project are being copied into this Cloudinary. So this is a Cloudinary user interface. And uh, if I do a refresh, I'm going to see some, I should see some folder or some directory, maybe static or assets, uh, whichever name you have uh, given to you, uh, you have named yours. So I'm just going to look uh, into the folders. So this folder was not there initially. And uh, we have admin. Uh, it's going to take some time because I'm using CK editor in this project as uh, my, uh, what you see is what you get, WS, uh, I, uh, Y, G, uh, whatever, the editor. So that's what I'm using. So I, it normally has a lot of files. So it's going to take some time if you are, go, if you are using this uh, Django CK editor. But you can use other editors like Summernote, uh, Tiny MC, MCE, or any other editor that you prefer. So, so we are going to give it some time and we are going to resume this after it has completed copying the static files. Uh, because if it has not completed, then even if we try to access our service by clicking the URL, it's not going to open it until it completes copying those uh, static files. So let's wait until it completes copying the static files. Yeah, so our copying of uh, static files has completed after quite some time. And as I've mentioned, this is due to the Django CK editor. It normally has a lot of files. So I believe you may have to read through its documentation. Maybe there's a way you can filter out some plugins or whatever it is that can make the files reduce. Uh, so we have, uh, how do I know it has completed? So there's these fixtures that have been co installed. And then there is, uh, it has started the Unicorn uh, server, server. And then it is, uh, it was, it is also saying that it has, telling me that it has, uh, it's listening at port 8000. So this is how I know that my deployment has completed because these are the, among the final commands that are in the uh, Docker railway file. So this makes me this is what makes me know that I have been able it has been able to be deploying and then one of the ways that you can also test uh, as you can see it is showing active so if the deploy uh, deploying crash uh, the deployment crashes or even the building then it's uh, this button will be probably red I think and it will it, it will show that it has crashed or yeah it's not running so I'll just click on these. Uh, link and as you can see, if you notice the URL, you'll see that it is live. Uh, so this is a live deployment on railway. And then, since I'm using the default uh, fixtures as specified in the documentation, I'm going to refer you to the documentation of the project, uh, the README file. So the README file uh, in the instructions, I have uh, somewhere I've talked about this, uh, the logging into the admin panel. So we have the default username for the admin panel and the password. So, and also the URL, I added a custom URL. And by the way, if you're deploying your Django project online and uh, you can, one of the ways to kind of hide your admin is just adding some in the admin URL you customize it besides using some other third party libraries. So in this case, I'm going to add this uh, suffix Tajiri. Uh, it's a Swahili name. Uh, that means uh, rich, uh, and I hope that I'll be a Tajiri someday soon. Uh, so yeah, so we have this uh, ad admin panel. So we are gonna use the default username who is web admin and the password I am there, uh, admin123. So let me just copy the password and input the username, which is web admin and the password. Yeah, and we have been able to log into our admin uh, user interface. And then you can check for details. We have the email addresses, group sites. Uh, like for the sites, I think I can add something here. I can rename the site to, by default, of course, it's example.com. But maybe I can call it this. Yeah, and uh, let's paste it there. Oh, yeah. Just save. Yeah, so you can do a bunch of things here. There's also blog posts. These are the blog posts that I had uh, that are present in the uh, front end part. You have the users and groups. 
So let's look at the website. Uh, so whenever you, if you are logged in and you navigate to the homepage, it's going to tell you to, I mean, it's going to give you a greet, show you a greeting, display a greeting and your name uh, or, the, or your username. Uh, so since you have logged in, I can be able to, this link, this URL was not there uh, when we are creating a new post. So that URL was not there. Uh, I think I know why this, this is no, we do not have this user. We cannot see the, uh, yeah, there is an issue because we cannot see the editing part for editing the blog post. But nevertheless, uh, let's look at something else. Let's look, let's look at the rest of these other pages. So you can log out, you can even change your password. Uh, when you click, when you want to change your password, it can, it gives you this user interface. So basically nothing, I've not changed anything else, but besides that, I've been able to set up an email. So you can be able to reset your password using this email and I challenge you to test this project with a, a custom SM, SMTP like uh, like SendGrid or Mailgun and uh, it should work. Uh, so we also have uh, the API. As I had mentioned, also the API, it also displays. Uh, yeah, so these are these are the, the at least we've been able to deploy our uh, project on railway, and uh, it mo it's more or less, I would say, it's more or less like Heroku, uh, maybe with a few differences here and there. And it's also it's a good platform as a service uh, which you can use to deploy your Django project and other projects like Node.js, Flask. Uh, and what have you so yeah so this brings us to the end of uh, this tutorial uh, in summary we've been able to look at uh, deployment on railway we've been able to uh, look at some of the things the railway dashboard uh, parts of it and uh, we've been able to look at the project settings uh, we've been able also to have an overview of the uh, changes in the project and we've also been able to look at uh, the Cloudinary. And uh, just before we conclude, uh, if you look at this Cloudinary, you realize that we have so many files. These files are not there in our previous user interface. So these are files for the specific to the application. Like we have the admin static files, uh, style sheets, IMG, CK editor, uh, Cloudinary. It normally creates this Cloudinary uh, directory. And then we have the JavaScript and the REST framework for the Django REST framework. And you also have these static files of JSON, which are similar to what, uh, what is normally created by, uh, this is how it looks like, normally created by the white noise. So it's just a list of the parts to, the, to each static file. So yeah, so in our next video, we are going to look at, uh, there is another service called Render. So we are going to try and deploy our project on Render platform as a service and uh, see how that uh, goes. Uh, so you can try and uh, test your deployment, uh, but note that uh, this free tier uh, is almost coming to an end uh, as from August. And uh, so you may have to look for either upgrade or have to look for an alternative service. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.